Now, I know the Australians wanted to protect their beautiful city from the English gladiators, but don't you think this is going a bit too far? test series and if last show was anything to go by tonight promises to be a really tremendous show but right now let's meet the first of our challengers from the UK Eunice Hut Hut and from Australia Nellie Baker Narelle Baker better known as Nellie is a 25 year old hairdresser from Queensland Eunice Hut Hut is a mum she's 27 the current gladiators international champion from Liverpool Stat-wise, Eunice is two years older, but she does have the advantage of being eight centimetres taller and ten kilos heavier than her opponent, Nelly. Please welcome Eunice and Nelly. Now, Nelly, I understand you broke your ankle. Tell us exactly how did it happen? Uh, I broke my ankle in the um, semi-finals. It was on the third games for the Eliminator on Hang Tough. And um, I got th three quarters of the way across against Blade and she pulled me off and we both fell on my ankle and broke the fibula. Well, Nelly, I've got to say, if anybody should be worried tonight, it should be the Gladiators, because anybody can come back so quickly from a broken ankle and be here tonight to perform, you must be a very strong lady. I'll give it 100%. Thanks very much. Wish you all the best. Thank you. You're a bit of a legend over in the UK. Um, yeah, over in um, Britain, I am the um, domestic and the international gladiator champion. So Nelly and the gladiators should watch out tonight. Yeah, well, the gladiators, yeah, they, they have to watch out. I, I hope Nelly all the best because it's, it's us against them in my eyes until the final event. So like, I hope that we, we both work and demolish the gladiators. <laughs> oh, oh, that will be interesting. Good luck for tonight. It's going to be a fantastic challenge. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Let's hear it for Eunice and Nelly. OK, we've met the ladies. Now let's meet the men. And from Australia, Andrew Holiday. And from the UK, Matt Beek. Andrew Halliday from Melbourne works in the fitness industry, claims his ambition is to be Australia's most famous fitness guru. Matt Beek from Epson works in telecommunications. Please welcome Matt and Andrew. Come on, guys! Hooray! Hello, Matt, and welcome to Australia. Thank you very much, Kimberly. Pleased to be here. Now, I understand you're a windsurfer. Have you had a chance to check out our beaches? Fantastic beaches, but I haven't had a chance to get on the water yet. So are you planning on doing it before you get back? If I get a spare couple of days, that'll be the first thing I'm going to do. And tell me, have you met Pamela Anderson along the way? Forget Pamela Anderson, Kimberly. I've got eyes for you only now. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> I'm blushing now. <laughs> now, you're self-employed in the UK. You're from Surrey. What do you do? I fit telephone systems and I work all over London. 
Wow, that should keep you pretty busy. How do you uh, find time to keep fit? Well, I knock off pretty early, and I know my boss is going to find that out now, but... <laughs> Good luck tonight, Matt. We're very pleased to have you here. Thanks very much. OK, Andy, tell us a little bit about yourself. Firstly, what do you do for a living? Um, Fash, I'm a personal trainer. I uh, get people fit for a living, you know, motivate them, get them out of bed, make sure they're doing the right exercise and watch their diet, all that sort of thing. Well, let me ask you, if you had two of our gladiators, we say Wolf and Vulcan, rang you up and said, look, Andrew, we'd like you to be our personal trainer, would you do it? Uh, I, I would, Fash, but uh, could you fit their two egos in the same room? <laughs> True, very true. You're a very brave man. You know very shortly you're going to meet them. Okay, thanks very much, Andrew. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Andrew from Australia and Matt from the UK. Go for it, guys. Well, these UK challengers have come a long way to compete tonight, so let's not keep them waiting. Please let the games begin. The power is awesome as a team of gladiators go shoulder to shoulder against the challengers in Powerball. Powerball. 60 seconds to pile up the points. Two for an outer basket and three for the center. On the red balls from Australia is a Nelly. And on the blue balls, from the UK is a Eunice. And predicting those baskets from Australia is a Delta. And from the UK, Lightning. And from Australia again, it's a Storm. So it's over to our international referee, John Anderson. Contender! Crunch time. Eunice straight off the mark, and Nelly denied by Lightning. Eunice again. Oh, and Lightning with the tackle. Nelly leaves the ground, they're standing two points, and straight into Lightning. Nelly reloads. And both girls score together. Here's Eunice. Reloads. Beats Lightning for two. Nelly, oh, unlucky to rim it. Eunice again. Oh, slips home two more, quells the storm. Nelly against Lightning and Delta. Bobbin and Weaving. Delta's there, almost out of bounds, recovers for two. Oh, Lightning strikes Eunice. Here's Nelly. Finding a time, plotting her route, waiting for the gap. Here she goes. Oh, makes a complete Nelly out of storm. And Eunice denied by Delta. Eunice Hutthart, the heroine of gladiator contenders worldwide. Oh, but not good enough to beat Lightning. And Delta's there to bring down Nelly. We've run out of time here, and a blistering start from both girls. Eunice was so fast and furious, even Lightning sometimes struggled, and Nelly was unlucky not to make this pay. Storm was more of a light breed in this tackle on Eunice, and Nelly proved she was more agile than Delta. Well, Nelly, that really was a fast one to open up with. How did you find it? Um, it was great. I'm really glad the first one's over. The girls are really strong, but I think Eunice and I managed to get a few points in there, so it was great. Well, let me tell you, you got eight points. Thank you. That's a very good start. Eunice, got to ask you, how do the Australian gladiators compare to the UK gladiators? Well, John, we're facing the best of the best from UK and the best of the best from Australia. To me, a United team like that are astounding. <laughs> Well done. You got yourself eight points. Well done. Storm. Tough girl Eunice, isn't she? Yeah, she is a tough girl. Eight points each, but remember, we're the power in Powerball. You certainly are. Well, if that's the case, Storm could do with a bit of recharging. After one game, Australia and Great Britain, eight each. Let's see how Matt and Andrew go in Powerball. Matt will be trying to goal with the blue balls and Andrew with the red. And trying to stop them are our gladiators, Warrior, Rhino and Vulcan. 
Warrior and Rhino known to British fans. Vulcan, an Australian hero. Better watch that hair, though. He'll have someone's eye out. Contenders! Ready! Gladiators! Ready! Three, two, one! Here's Matt. Two seconds on the clock and two points on the board. Andrew run out of bounds by Warrior. Matt against Rhino. Warrior's there. Andrew in for two. Vulcan conceding all the points so far. Andrew again. Warrior and Rhino, big tackle. Here's Max. Two more points against Vulcan. Andrew, this time Vulcan gets a grip on the situation. Max streaks past Rhino for two. Andrew reloads. Warrior, good tackle. Matt against Vulcan. Vulcan fully on Matt's helmet. And Matt disgusted. Warrior takes out Andrew. Vulcan bats it away. Come on, move it, move it. Matt reloads. Waves it up. Andrew to draw their fire. Oh, superb tactics from Matt. Outfitting everyone on the power ball pitch. And the crowd don't like it, but then they wouldn't, would they? Andrew back to reload. Here he comes. Oh, another easy two. Andrew and Matt at the same end again. Matt again. Here he comes. Oh, just outside the whistle. Matt the star using brains as well as brawn that time. The Glad used a variety of tackles like this clean one on Andrew and this suspect one on Matt. Guys, what a start to the night. Andrew, you scored yourself four points. And Matt, what do you think you scored? No idea. Head down, bum up. You just scored yourself nine points. <laughs> Woo! That was a tough, tough match. Now, John Anderson, I'd just like to uh, make a bit of an inquiry. I noticed Vulcan was being a bit tough with Matt. Well, this isn't a game for little boys and little giddles. <laughs> And uh, so as far as I'm concerned, fair and square, you think? well, I think the tackle may have been just a little dubious, but I think in this occasion, uh, since the guys were scoring very well, we give the benefit of the doubt to the gladiators. Okay, so Vulcan, come over here. Don't think you can get away with that every time, okay? Get away with what, Kimberly? Well, you know, I saw the way you were tackling Matt. I'm doing my best to tackle him, but uh, I'm going to tell you, there's Gordon coming up next. And you're going to get it, boy, I'm telling you now. Right. Well, Matt clearly pleased Kimberley brought the subject up. After one game, Great Britain leads Australia nine points to four. Gladiators. Down there to my right, you can see the old and the new. The bounty and the sea cup pulling across Circular Quay. Circular Quay was where the first wool clippers came in. Today, it acts as the ferry port for Sydney Harbour. It's a real fun place. It's where the local characters gather to entertain the tourists. A bit like our Covent Garden. Lightning obviously impressed this chap. Just like Covent Garden, it's a cultural melting pot. Street artists from all over the world come here to entertain the passers-by. Rhino is quick to join in and do some entertaining himself. Keeps the crowd amused and entertains the entertainer. <laughs> yes, a dancing rhino would surprise you too. From Chinese musicians to European circus acts to this chap, a real Australian, an Aborigine who comes down to Circular Quay every day, dons his body paint, plays his didgeridoo, and performs his ceremonial dance. Not quite the same as rhinos, is it? They live half a world apart, but tonight there's only inches between them. This is Duel. Duel. 30 seconds of pugil power. 10 points for a clean KO. Eunice is first up. She's from the UK, and she'll be taking on our Australian gladiator, Flame. Flame, the fiery redhead in this match. She's fractionally taller and 10 kilos heavier than her challenger. And to start this mighty duel, over to Mike Whitney. Challenger, are you ready? Gladiator, are you ready? Three, two, one. A great British kick.
kickboxing champion Yunus straight to work. The Australian pugil sticks huge by British standards, and Yunus now getting a real taste of one. Under fire from the flame, but Yunus resilient, instinctively digging in. She's used to combat. A superb display of grit and determination from Yunus, copping lefts and rights and all sorts up there. It's a miracle she's still standing. She's desperately trying to get back into this duel. Flame, a powerful pugilist, but Yunus looks like she'll go the distance. There's the whistle, just as Flame steps across. Superb result for Yunus. Well, this was a Flame's eye view of the action as filmed from a helmet cam. It was rough up there. Yunus, you got the first blow in, but then you did take a little bit of stick. I, said, I, I got a blow in, right, and then I got hit. And, and I, I thought this hit sent me back into England. <laughs> I, d I didn't know where I was. I was spinning round, up and down, nearly lost my stick. And I, I was just, I think a bit of instincts kept me up there, but boy, what a pace to the top. Well, in all fairness, Eunice, I think Flame is probably one of the biggest female gladiators we've seen. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> there you are. That says it. Flame, you thought she was going to go then, didn't you? I thought she was going to go, but she stood up to me. She's a fantastic challenger. I don't think anybody will argue with that. Eunice, congratulations, you got those points. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Well, wasn't that a great battle? But I've got to tell you, it doesn't get any easier. Because next up, from Australia, the bionic woman, Nelly. And she's going to be doing battle against the lady of the night from the UK, Nightshade. Well, uh, hurrying on from that dubious introduction from Flash, let's look at Nightshade's superb stats. 18 centimetres taller than a challenger and 14 kilos heavier. Challenger, are you ready? Gladiator, are you ready? On guard. Three, two, one. Nightshade unleashes her attack. In proper measurement, she's over seven inches taller than Nelly. Nelly getting stuck in as well. Oh, she's dropped her stick. Oh, and a bit of afters from Nightshade. Very gracious. In the replay, Nelly takes one to the chops, and before she can recover, Nightshade quickly disposes of her. After two games, Nelly from Australia stays on eight, while Eunice from Great Britain moves up to 13. Well, here I am, 1,000 feet up. Top of the centre point tower in Sydney. What a fantastic view. I took the easy way up, actually. I, uh, I got the lift. <laughs> but my friend Hunter here, he, uh, he climbed up the outside. How do you find it? <laughs> well, it wasn't as tough as Polax. Didn't think it would be. And next up, he's a very popular man from Australia, Andrew! But he's going to be up against the Hunter! A huge man with a huge following. Over 10 centimetres taller than Andrew and 31 kilos heavier. Still only 22 years old. Challenger, are you ready? Gladiator, are you ready? On guard! Three, two, one! When Hunter's on the case, we know he's quick to finish. A superb variety of blows in his repertoire. Jabbing, shoving, pushing, and Andrew stepped across. No one scores while Hunter's around. Andrew on the mat. And even this Australian crowd can't fail to be impressed by this hitman. In the replay, Andrew takes a sharp jab, gets himself unbalanced, and in the ensuing tangle, steps forward to Hunter's platform. Andrew, no points. Are you disappointed? Oh, no. I have a look at him. <laughs> yes, I have had a good look at him, actually. He's even cuter with his helmet off. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you think so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, Hunter, how was he as a challenger? How does he compare to the Brits? Yeah, he was great. He tried to use tactics rather than use his size. He leant back, made me stretch over a bit. But I've got all the Australian gladiators watching me. I've got all the British gladiators watching me. I'm feeding off their power. And at the end of the day, I was just going to batter the lad. Wow. He's certainly got a lot of energy. Yeah, and I think Kimberly summed it up beautifully. Well, our next duelist is Great Britain's Matt Beak. And he told me earlier that this is one game he's really looking forward to. My favourite gladiator event at the moment is Jewel. 
because uh, I've put a little bit of weight on since the last series, so I think it's going to help move my balance and technique, so hopefully that'll be a good one for me tonight. Fighting for point is Matt from the UK, and he's up against the tallest of our gladiators, Tower. Get an eyeful of this tower, just over 10 centimetres taller than Matt and just under 10 kilos heavier. Challenger, are you ready? Gladiator, are you ready? On guard, three, two, Let's get one. ready to rumble and Matt looking to extinguish the tower inferno in front of him. But this is one tower which will not be demolished. Matt trying to mix it, but Tower is relentless. And Matt is in severe trouble up there, trying to get back. Oh, he takes a stinging left. Oh, and that's that for Matt. A remarkable KO victory for the Tower. The Tower of Power. At last, the Aussie crowd have got something to sing about in this event. Matt tries to regain his balance as Tower whips in the left, right in the face, and Matt was finished. The picture from the helmet cam underscores the relentless pressure of Tower's offensive and the power of the Tower finish. Matt, unlucky, tried desperately hard to stay on there. What was it like when you knew you were going up against one of the tallest gladiators, the Tower? Obviously, he's got a long reach advantage, but I managed to stay up there a couple of times wobbling on the edge, but he was fantastic. He got me off fair, fair, fair. Tower, big man, well done. Thank you very much. Uh, Matt's a great contestant. I... I thought I'd get him off a bit earlier, but he's, he's got good feet and he stayed up there. Well, I'll tell you what, it was a heck of a battle to watch. Very enjoyable. Well done. Let's hear it for Tower and Matt. Well done. After two games, the scores stay the same. Australia's Andrew four, Great Britain's Matt nine. It's back down to Kimberley. It's one against five, but don't expect any mercy from the Gladiators. That's Gauntlet up next. <laughs> Pride will always spur you on. A gladiator that will knock you dead in the gauntlet. Gauntlet. Challengers have to run the gauntlet in under 20 seconds to score the maximum. The first up is Eunice. And she's going to be facing the Storm. Vogue. The Fist of Fury, Nightshade, and Flame! Well, Eunice looks singularly unimpressed by that bunch. Earlier, she told me why. Never, never be worried, never have a ne negative attitude. Look positive towards every event, and I love every event. Contender! comes Eunice. Oh, and straight through the eye of the storm into Vogue. Vogue trying with the power pads, past her, into Fury, through her. Nightshade snaps her power pad shut. Next, it's Flame. Is she there? She is! Eunice Hutter! What an incredible gauntlet from this incredible challenger. Fury blinked and Eunice was gone. Nightshade tried hard to close her up, then Flame was given no respect whatsoever, and Eunice snatched the ten. Eunice, you can stop now. It's over, it's over. <laughs> I just want to do it again. <laughs> I can tell you were really psyching yourself up for that one. Yeah, I, I just love them ones. Contact sports, I just love them. Well, now we know why, because you just showed the gladiators what you were made of. Ten points. What time was it? What time? Let me tell you, it was 14.3 seconds. Yes! That is unbelievable. Eunice faced three Australian and two British gladiators. So now, let's take out Fury and replace her with Lightning. Now Nelly is facing three Brits and two Aussie gladiators. Contender, ready! Gladiators, ready! Well, I bet Nelly wishes she had her elephants here. 
as she faces this marauding bunch. Nelly runs straight into trouble in the shape of Vogue. Dispensing with Vogue, next it's the Storm. Storm for once, putting up half a decent effort against the wall. Oh, Storm is out of her sector. Come on, come on, come on. Lightning steams in, that's Thunder, and collects with the backhand. Next, it's Flame. The time running down, and Nelly's going to be hard pushed to pick up the points. Flame doing the business, and Nelly is going to be out go, of time. Go, 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 go. Lightning came in with a blockbuster. Nelly tried to outspin her, took another blow from the backhand, and it went from bad to worse. Unlucky they hit you very hard there. Yeah, the third hit was a huge hit. I didn't, couldn't see that one coming, but anyway, that's why it goes. Well, you don't actually know it, Nelly, but it looks like you've actually got lipstick on your, on your cheek. I don't know how you somebody kissed you on your cheek from there. I know. I think that was that really big hit. I, I couldn't see it. But you're OK. No injuries. Yeah, no injuries. I'm fine. Well, no points, but never mind. Let's hear it for Nelly! Well done. Nelly there with her nemesis lightning. After three games, Nelly stays on eight. Eunice stretches her lead to 23. Gladiators. There's a great view of the Sydney Opera House from here on top of the Harbour Bridge. You know, they estimated it would cost $7 million to build. It actually ended up costing $102 million. Yeah but it was worth every penny. There are lots of places to relax and have fun here in Sydney. This is one of the places that kids love, Luna Park. Yeah, great! Luna Park, how exciting! Did I say Luna Park or Looney Tark? Scary, Maggie. What the scary? You know, coming off the top of pole legs. That's scary. Come on. Yeah, I'm more of a pole ball sort. Before Andrew runs the gauntlet, here's what he thinks of our great British gladiators. UK glads are, you know, they're a class act, of course. Um, I'm uh, tipping in, in certain games, they'll, um, you know, be better than me, and, and other games, I'll, I'll have a, you know, a bit of an edge on them. Um, I think uh, Warrior is a bit of a, <laughs> a wall, ten foot and bulletproof. Um, but uh, and and Wolf's a real classic too. <laughs> Funny boy. As they say in the pantos, he's behind you. Oh, Andrew getting in some tit for tat. The Aussie formation exercise team there. The Wolf's been summoned for a lecture. It is time you learn how to behave and you won't be in the game much longer if you don't behave. That's the first and the final warning. <laughs> well, he's only been on 10 seconds and he's got a yellow card. Ow! Andrew's first stop in the gauntlet and he'll be up against the might of our Australian and British gladiators, Rhino, Taipan, Wolf, Vulcan and Warrior. Contender! This will be no holiday for Andrew Halliday. Rhino knocking him from pillar to post straight into Taipan. Taking some stick out of the Taipan into the fire and Wolfie merciless with the ramrod. Vulcan next. Snaps those pads shut like a pair of pinches. Andrew bobbing and weaving, but Vulcan covering his every move. And next it's Warrior. Goes low. Warrior can't hold him. Hats off to Andrew. Through the gauntlet. The crowd are going crazy. Well, Andrew ducks low and left, then ducks right. Warrior can't hold him, and Andrew scrambles over Warrior and the line. That was your fault, man. You stopped him. Wait a minute, my fault? Wolf squarely blaming Vulcan for Andrew's success there and squaring up to him. And Warrior playing United Nations mediator as only he can. Well, well done, Andrew. Sorry about all that. But you got 24.9 seconds it took you to get through. You got yourself five points. Woo! Yeah! 
Tell you what, best say that, no tell of love, mate. <laughs> but Andrew, you knew you were going to get a tough time. You knew it. Remember when you first came out, you said a couple of nasty or naughty things about the Wolfman and Vulcan, so you knew what to expect. I uh, was being a bit cheeky, but you know, I wasn't that cheeky. Let's hear it for Andrew. <laughs> he, he let that guy go easy. So this time, you go in front of me so I can watch you. You go in front of me. You let that guy through too easy. Well, let's see if the wolf has got a point. Andrew stumbled into Vulcan, who closed those pads like a man trap, and then managed to hold the ducking and diving Andrew for at least 10 seconds. Well, I think Wolf's being unreasonable, but then what's new? Yeah, I'm getting sick of this wolf, man. And while that's settling down, we're going to change the lineup for the men too. We're going to take out Warrior and replace him with Tower. So Matt now faces three Aussies and two Brits. Contender ready! Gladiators ready! Three, two, one! Vulcan boasted he'd wreak revenge on Matt in gauntlets. Oh, so that was all talk. Wolf won't be impressed with Vulcan's performance either. Wolf be holding Matt. Matt wriggling free. Next comes Taipan. Oh, knocks him down like a ten pin. Rhino's next, crushing him with those pads. He'll do well to get out of that grip. Oh, he does well. Next comes the tower, and tower with the up and over. Oh, Matt dumped unceremoniously outside. But was it fair, or did it infringe the rules? Looking at the slow mo, it looks like Matt ran high up the wall, and Tower was there to nudge him out. Here's Wolf and Vulcan again, and what's occurring here? Oh. Vulcan is bewildered by Wolf's behaviour as I am. Yeah. The crowd love it. I'll take back what I said. I watched him then and he was really trying hard. What on earth is Wolf talking about? No wonder he looks stunned. I am good. The woman say I'm good. I must be good. Woman. Vulcan, you were better yeah. in the previous gauntlet. Take it from me. Don't listen to Wolf. Now, John Anderson, there seems to be a little bit of confusion as to uh, how Matt finished the gauntlet. We've talked uh, among the referees, right. we've looked at the situation, considered it very carefully, and we are of the opinion that Matt was legitimately ejected from the gauntlet, Therefore, and there are no points No to points Matt. at all. Matt, disappointed with that effort. Yeah, it's a very, very hard push through. Which one was the hardest to get through? It's all a blur when you're going through. I don't even know I was in there with you. Well, I noticed Wolf was holding you down there for a while. Yeah, I come up and, yeah, took some hard blows from all of them. Well, you certainly took a hard blow from uh, Tower at the yeah. end. He's caught me twice now, Tower. He's good. He certainly is. After three games, our scores, Andrew and Matt, both remain on nine points. It's like Big Mike. Warrior. Which one's called Skippy? What? There's been a crash work on the motorway, 17 cars involved, a coach. Oh my God, we better get there quick now, hey? Lead the way, off you go. Come on. Oh. Is she gorgeous? This is Marge, okay? And the funny thing about these creatures is that they never drink anything. They get all their nourishment from the eucalyptus. Lovely. This little one match called Digger. He's a sweet little thing and he's just about to go to sleep, I think. He's nodding off very, very slowly. I've never seen a wombat before. They're really cuddly and beautiful. Just like me. He's just like a little teddy bear, isn't it gorgeous? <laughs> <laughs> just cuddle him all day, couldn't you? Stroke him. People have a go at me for not brushing my hair. Look at this emu. I think I might have to put a brush through it. Mike Whitney, what exactly are you holding there? Well, this is the ashes, the gladiator's ashes. This is what will end up on the mantelpiece if one male and one female challenger from England, uh, from the UK or Australia win. Uh, this is the ashes. Yeah. OK. Well, we've heard of social climbers. But these climbers are very antisocial. Yes, this is the wall, and the gladiators are set to drag the challengers off. 
The wall. 60 seconds of climb time. First to the top scores 10, second 5. Units from the UK will be pursued by the Australian gladiator, Fury. And Nelly from Australia will be pursued by the British gladiator, Jet. Nelly will have her work cut out against the British wall specialist, Jet. Taller than the Australian challenger by a couple of centimetres, also six kilos heavier. On the other side of the wall, Great Britain Junis will be hoping to capitalise on her three centimetre height advantage and her four kilo weight advantage. This promises to be a great battle. Challengers, you will go on my whistle. Gladiators, you will go on John's whistle. Three, two, one. So it's Eunice in the red, white and blue for Great Britain and Nelly in the green for Australia. And Eunice clearly in the lead and Nelly struggling as the glads get underway. And Fury looking good on that wall chasing Eunice. Nelly struggling with the overhang. Looks to be in trouble. Can Jet get there? No, not able to get a grip. Eunice still leading though. Jet again on Nelly. Got her shoelace. Can she strip her? Eunice with Fury snapping at her heels, but Eunice is there. It's 10 points for Great Britain. And Nelly hanging on. Eunice celebrates while Nelly struggles. Yeah! Eunice is pleased with that. And Jet bracing herself to take a big one. Here she comes. Yes, she's got her. All the honours to Great Britain that time. Well done, Eunice. Did so well there. Thank you. That's 10 points. That now puts you on 33 points, Eunice. Oh, thank you. Did you like that back at home? I certainly did. Well done, darling. Let's hear it for Eunice from the UK. Nelly, you needed to tie those shoelaces a bit tighter. Yeah, I certainly did. It's not my night tonight, but um, anyway, Eunice did a great job. Now, you're on eight points. Eunice is now on 33. Uh-oh, the Eliminator's up next. I'm fast, but I don't know whether I'm that fast. <laughs> After four games, Nelly is stuck on eight, while Eunice leaps to 33 points. This is my first time in Australia. Sydney wasn't exactly what I expected it to be, but here in Brisbane, it's absolutely beautiful. The people are very friendly and helpful, um, and I also found an ideal place to train, on the beach, running along, on the sand, in the sun, listening to the waves. It's very nice. The flight from the UK to Sydney was 24 hours, so you can imagine, when we got here, we were really jet-lagged. At the wrong time, we were wide awake, but Sydney has everything. We found a 24-hour gym. So Worry and I went to work out at 1 o'clock in the morning Australian time. By about 3 o'clock, we were seriously tired and we could easily go to bed. <laughs> Next up is the men. And representing Australia, it's Andrew. And he's going to be chased by the UK gladiator, the Hunter. And on the other side, from the UK, it's Matt. And he's going to be chased by the Australian gladiator, a Condor. Condor will need all his soaring skills to bring down the contender because on paper, the only advantage the Aussie gladiator has is being six kilos lighter than Matt Beak. On the other side of the wall, great British gladiator Hunter is younger and taller than wall specialist Andrew, but he's also considerably heavier. It's going to be a brawl on the wall. Three, two, one. Matt's climbing the favoured left side of the wall, but Andrew's taken the lead already. Matt's struggling for a foothold as the gladiators are coming. There's a lot of wall between Hunter and Andrew, but Hunter climbing well, and so is Condor. But Andrew's looking good for the 10 points. He's there! Hunter fails to even get close, and match at the summit as well, leaving Condor looking like a dodo. Superb climb from both challengers, and aren't they happy with that? In the playback, Andrew is almost half a wall ahead of Hunter, and Matt all but jumps to the top to claim five points. Great climb. Andrew, you were determined to take the lead, and you did it for Australia. Ten points. Yes! This is one happy man. I wanted to get to that top. The big man hunters by me saying one slip. He's right, don't take a slip, he'll get you. Matt, five points, but Andrew's taken the lead. 
Yeah, never mind. Two and a half seconds in the eliminator isn't a long time. You'll be a force to be reckoned with. Hopefully. I want to put on a good show for everybody. I don't want to come here and lose. After four games, Australia's Andrew's on 19, while Great Britain's Matt is on 14. Well, the stakes are high as the challengers go head-to-head -head for a place in next week's Ashes final. But there's a lot of national pride riding on this. It's going to be a thriller. Next up, the Eliminator. Welcome back, and as well as the Ashes, the winners of this series ride home on these magnificent machines. What will it be? A shot at glory or a valiant defeat? Well, that will be decided by The Eliminator. The Eliminator. And whoever wins this wins a place in the Grand Ashes final. Well, Eunice, Nelly, we're here. The dreaded Eliminator. Eunice, you've got 33 points, which gives you 12 and a half seconds head start. And I know you'll take nothing at all for granted. I never take anything for granted, John. And just N Nelly, a couple of weeks ago, if, if I was in her shoes, I'd still be lying in bed telling my husband to bring me a box of chocolate and make me a cup of tea. I think she's just awesome, and I've learned a lot from her today even. And it's been an honor to come here and compete in Australia, in Brisbane, against Nelly. Thank you very much, Eunice. Nelly, what can we say? You looking forward to it? Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Eunice has got a great lead on me, but um, all I can do is just go for it, and hopefully I might, might come out and might catch her. Twelve and a half seconds you've got to catch up. That is an awful lot to do by anyone's standards, even if you're a bionic woman or not. That's right. Now, Eunice is a great competitor, and likewise, feelings ditto. She's Thank great. you very much, Nelly. Thank you. Eunice, Nelly, we wish both of you all the best. And now we're going to hand you over to our international referee, Mr. John Anderson. Eunice, you will go on my whistle. Nelly, you will go on Mike's whistle. Three, two, one. Eunice Hutthard from Liverpool begins her Eliminator run. She's been a British Gladiators champion, an international Gladiators champion, and now she's staking her claim on the Ashes for Great Britain. What a tremendous lead. Nelly's away for Australia. Incidentally, as a result of her Gladiators appearances, Eunice was given the job as a stunt woman on the recent Bond film GoldenEye, and from this performance you can see why, as she hops across the rollers onto the scramble net and climbing well. Nelly very fast on the hand ladder. Eunice struggling on the nets, trouble with the footholds as Nelly skips and scurries across the rolling logs. Eunice eventually gets to the top, only to zip the balance beam and the travelator to go. Eunice down the line of the death ride to the deck below. Eunice lands as Nelly hits the top of the net. Eunice across to the furthest balance beam, slightly hesitant. Nelly down the zip. Eunice Huffhart wins this, it'll be a rerun of the British finals over a year ago because she'll be facing Karen Sampy. Here she comes, stonking up the Travelator. Look at that incredible stamina. Eunice Huffhart of Great Britain swings away into the Ashes final. The British fans go berserk. Here comes Nelly. She's made a remarkable recovery from that broken ankle, but on the day she didn't have what was needed to beat Eunice. Nelly, keep your head up. John Anderson advising up, Nelly, stressing the need to keep her head up. And the crowd urging her up. Come on, Nelly. She was determined to do this. Come on now. The whole arena are behind on, you. Head up, head up. Come on, and there's the winner, Eunice Huttart, urging her on. What a tremendous contender. And she's done herself proud in front of her home crowd. Eunice, congratulations. Winner again. I suppose we're going to see you again in next week's final. Well done. Thank you. It's going to be great competing against Karen again. And it's such an honour to be here and to have done this today. Thank you very much. And by the way, that was one minute, ten seconds. Well done, Eunice. Well done, Nelly. You don't go away empty-handed. Have you enjoyed it? It was a lot to make up, wasn't it? Yeah, I had a great time. And 
Guinness is wonderful and she's great. Well done. Let's hear it for Nelly and the champion Eunice from the UK. Well, now for an Australian view of Great Britain. My idea of England is that it'll be cold, overcast and raining. I'd love to travel. I'd love to get to London. It seems so huge and far away, so... Well, I've spent a bit of time in the UK. I've played rugby league, um, the Ashes against England in rugby league in 1990. I spent four months in 1986 playing for Leeds uh, Rugby League, which I enjoyed. The hospitality over there was fantastic, and I'm, hopefully I'll get an opportunity to go back. I've never been to the UK, no, um, but hopefully with Gladiators we'll get to come over there, and I'm looking forward to that and forward to meeting all of you. London's a lovely city, and... England itself, I haven't seen the countryside, but everybody I know that's travelled there has said it's such a beautiful place. I'd love to go and see Scotland and countryside of England. And what I saw in London, uh, was, I mean, leaves you with memories for the rest of your life. Great people, very similar to Australia, I can imagine. You like neighbours and things like that over there, don't you, TV show? Andrew, you have done an exceptional job tonight. You must be happy with your performance. Uh, I'm extremely wrapped with the uh, last wall climb. Um, you can't do much better than that. But uh, I'm really looking forward to hit, just hitting this right one on the head. OK, well, you're going into the Eliminator with a two and a half second lead. But I heard you saying before you are a little bit worried about the handbike. Yeah, well, the, ha the handbikes are something we didn't have in the first series. And um, we've only had a few goes on it. And hopefully uh, I'll be able to you know, nail that one too. OK, so Matt. He's going in two and a half seconds uh, before you. However, you have had experience on the handbike, so that may be a, a bit of an advantage for you tonight. Yeah, there's a definite technique to it, but you've got to hit the technique dead right, so hopefully I'll be on it. But you're not going to tell us what that technique is? Oh, yeah, by the way, yeah. <laughs> Not. <laughs> OK, so are you confident? Are there any areas that, that bother you about the Eliminator? Only his two and a half second head start. OK, well, it's going to be a close finish. And, guys, I don't want to put any pressure on you, but Matt, England's counting on you, and Andrew, Australia's counting on you. So, guys, let's do it, and it's over to you, Mike Whitney. Well, as the Australian crowd look forward in their own way to this eliminator, the challengers go through their final preparations. Andrew looking at the first obstacle, Matt looking to chalk up the win. Andrew! You will go on my whistle. Matt, you will go on John's whistle. Competitors, are you ready? Three, two, one. Andrew Halliday from Australia sets out on his quest for victory. So does Matt Beek from Great Britain. Andrew off the hurdles and onto the rope. Oh, Andrew with a very fast technique on the rope. Matt on the rope as well. As Andrew starts spinning the pedals on the handbike, Andrew looks to be maintaining that two and a half second lead. Matt still on the handbike as Andrew touches down and legs it across the rolling logs. Next, the scramble net. Matt bounds across the rollers, leaps onto the net. He's eaten into the lead superbly. Andrew, good, steady climb up the net, onto the runway for the dash to the furthest ship. Andrew hooks himself up to the line and leaps into thin air. And Matt is only just behind him. Andrew turns left to take the furthest balance beam. Matt lands just moments behind, but look at Andrew, he's fast across the balance beam. Next, it's the Travelator for a place in the final. Here he comes, yes, he's there! Through the burst and into the Ashes final. Andrew Halliday of Australia, Matt Beat for Great Britain, storms up the Travelator. Two and a half seconds, just too much to claw back against a challenger of Andrew's quality. Gentlemen, come down here. What a competition! Andrew, you are the finalist. Congratulations. 55 seconds. <laughs> that is a record for you. And there is your gold medal to prove it. Uh, no, it's not chocolate. <laughs> 55 seconds. Oh, you must be happy with that. Uh, look, that's the fastest I thought I could do it. Well, I'll prove myself wrong. <laughs> I can do it faster, I reckon. Well, I'll tell you what, you didn't have any trouble on the handbike at all. Yeah, well, you got to psych people out. Yeah, you certainly must have psyched Matt out. Matt, what a shame. You didn't do it, but it was so close. I'll give you 110%, but at the end of the day, the best man won. OK, well, we've got a special souvenir for you. Thanks there is your you. silver medal. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Thanks to Australia for being fantastic hosts as well.
Well, Nelly and Matt have come a long way and they've given it their best shot. That's right, and Andrew and Eunice, we'll see you in the finals of the Ashes next week. And we'll also see the Australian and British gladiators, and we hope to see you too. Thanks for watching. Good night. A woman! For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. You can't beat a bit of bully. It's true, and it's what Sundays were made for. Jim Bowen is waiting in the wings. He's just counting out the BFH, and he'll be right with us. Bullseye, next on Challenge. And then that's followed at nine by Bradley Walsh and The Chase.